Hey bag makers, today I'm going to be talking about the Spot on Dot Magnifying Lens Set. New Cork Fabric, Tula Pink Fabric, Thread, and Notions. The book review will be for a book called Embroidered Kitchen Garden. I'll be showing a brand new free pattern and video that we just came out with this week and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I see Kristen's watching from Michigan. Um, also, uh, Cynthia and Trisha from Colorado. And let's see who else. Oh, Charlie's watching from Connecticut. I saw some viewers from Australia in the chat um, talking, Deb from California. So thank you everyone so much for tuning into Social Sunday. Just a friendly reminder before I get started, everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So. I wanted to say hello to my Amma, my mom and dad. Um, hope you guys are staying safe. Haven't seen you in a while. Hopefully, you, I'm sure you're watching live. I know my Amma said she would be watching on Sunday. I also wanted to let you know that we have um, brought back book club. I know a lot of you are staying home and um, I had two goals in my head this week. Um, I wanted to design, to design a new free pattern and video for you all and also um, we've chosen a book for book club. So I tried to choose a book that might be readily available either at your online local library, um, Kindle. Um, hopefully you don't have to go anywhere to get a copy um, in most cases. Um, so we've chosen the book called The Quilter's Apprentice and Danny's gonna put a graphic of the cover of the book on the screen. This is a book by Jennifer Cheberini, and we are going to discuss book club in a few weeks. I wanted to give everyone time, just like we've done with book club in the past. We wanted to give everyone time to secure a copy of the book and plenty of time to read it. So this is the cover of the book. We're going to be discussing it April 19th. Tamara will be joining me via her home. So she's gonna be tuning in uh, with her iPad. So we're still gonna be talking via the same dynamic you're used to with book club. She just won't be here sitting next to me. But um, again, that will be April 19th. So hopefully you can secure a copy of that book and we'll be discussing it. And um, if you like that book, it's part of a series. So that's another reason why I chose that, that particular book. Um, again, especially for those that, are, that will be at home a lot um, so that you have um, more copies to pick up um, with the, the remainder of the books in the series. All right, let's get over to the notion of the week. Um, this is a really interesting notion that I found. It's called, um, it's by the Gypsy Quilter, designed by Carolina Moore. It's called the Spot on Dot Magnifying Lens Set. And oh, it's really interesting, but it's mainly used for um, either fussy cutting fabrics or using your ruler to make more precise cuts. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you what this looks like. All right, so I laid out my ruler. So this is what the set looks like. It comes in a plastic container so that you can keep both of the magnifying lens pieces clean. So there's a smaller one and there's a larger one. And on the back of them, they have a sort of a, a ring that helps temporarily stick this to your ruler. So it's not gonna be stuck like tape. It's just kind of a, a little bit tacky and it'll stick to, to your acrylic rulers. Um, this is great for fussy cutting. I, I pulled a piece of fabric here just to kind of demonstrate one possible use for this ruler. So um, again, it's two different sizes, so you can use whichever size is easiest for you. And if you notice when I put the, oh, let me, sorry, my ruler is reflecting a lot of light. So I don't know if you can see, but as I hover that over the 30, you can probably see that it got much bigger. Um, this is useful for picking out points in your ruler that you want to magnify so you can see better. I know certainly when I'm cutting, sometimes if I need, say for instance, seven eighths of an inch, it's awful hard to see that little notch over there for seven eighths of an inch. So that, that helps with spotting the measurements on the ruler as well as 
if you need a little help fussy cutting, ruler. perhaps with the ruler um, over your fabric, you need a little help making things larger, like like that flower right there, so that made it larger, easier to see where, where exactly I want to position it. This will also be helpful for your So Sweetness acrylic rulers if you need to see um, a certain portion of the text on the ruler enlarged and um, they just stay clean in the case so when you're done using them you just put them back in the case and there's like a little foamy insert over there to hold each of them and it, uh, obviously you can see it has the two different sizes in there. So again this is the spot on dot magnifying lens set and it's from the Gypsy Quilter. As always the link for that product is in the description if you're interested in finding out more about it. Um, the cost, um, the sizes, what have you. Um, so I have a question for you. Let me know, do you wear glasses or contacts? So when I'm on the show, I don't think I've ever worn my glasses on the show, but since we've been home for, I think this is the 11th day now, I've been wearing my glasses um, probably 90% of the time. I think this is the only day this week um, that I've been wearing my contact lenses. So I've had the glasses on I feel like I need to get them adjusted, but I, I'm afraid to adjust them myself. They, they, they started the other day slipping off my nose, so um, I don't know. I, I guess I'll make do for now, or maybe I'll get desperate enough to try to, 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 to adjust them myself, certainly. So uh, we got two new colors of cork fabric in the shop, and I wanted to show them, perhaps the overhead camera might be better. Danny, you think the overhead might be better to show the colors of the cork? No. This is fine, okay. All right, so this is the, did we decide on emerald green for this one? I guess so. Danny and I were going back and forth on the color for a long time with this. Uh, it's a really, you really dark green. Show front and both. Oh, no, that's okay, this is fine. Um, emerald green for this one, and this one, I, I requested this one, one from the manufacturer because I just saw it. was saw my it. idea. It w actually, it was your idea. Um, Danny said I should ask the manufacturer for um, a black background cork with rainbow metallic since our natural cork with rainbow metallic has been so popular so that's what this one looks like really pretty colors um i just love this one this is probably my my new favorite but um anyway those those two <laughs> are listed in the shop now um since we do work from our home danny and i are taking care of the orders now and we are still shipping so um, making sure you're taken care of and made to sure made sure to stock up on the notions and the shipping supplies so we could um, continue on and not run out, run out of things that we needed to ship packages like tape or you know just simple things like that so um, definitely here for you guys um, the new fabric that I've added to my stash this week I've got three huge piles sitting over here of Tula Pink homemade fabrics and her coordinating new threads and notions so I've been waiting to share those with you I've had them for a little bit but I wanted to wait till the fabric was at your local quilt shop or your favorite online shop so let me jump over. I'm going to show you. Let me show you the thread first, I guess. So here's the new Tulip Pink homemade thread collection from Aurafil. As you know, Aurafil is my favorite. I love using Aurafil thread for my projects. And this is three different boxes within the tin. And let me open these up so you can see the colors. Probably should have investigated how these open before the show. Oh, they just slide out. Okay, there we go. Um, You're ruining it. That's what I get for not <laughs> being more prepared with this. All right, so some great greens and blue colors. Um, yeah, definitely I should have taken those out of the plastic, but um, there's also some pinks and oranges, and there's a purple, a really dark purple. And then there's some larger spools also. So these are some neutrals and then the green, which I really love this green. I actually have this green in my stash already. Oh, I wish I would have taken them out of the plastics, but I think you get the idea. Um, so that comes in a really nice reusable tin. The Tula Pink Notions are all pretty cool. Um, here's some straight pins with um, pink plastic unicorn heads. Tula came out with this Quilter's Project Journal, so it's got pages with little little pluses on it so you can design your quilt layouts and color in your, your quilt designs. All the pages are the same. 
Um, this project bag, which Violet really had her eyes on, so it's got water on the inside, clear vinyl, some glitter, circles and stars, and then as you can see, the inside is still clear, so you can see what you've put inside of it. And then a really large project bag, and the front of it is clear, so whatever you put inside, you can see. So this one, I, I really like this one, and green's my favorite color, so I was happy about the green. All right, so let's let's start going through the fabric. Uh, we'll start with this. I, I divided them up into separate piles. Um, I really love this damask prints. It's got the scissors with the thimbles. This one's really cute. I like the colors also. This one has little speckles, perfect for linings, and the background is charcoal on this one. This is my favorite print from the whole line. Um, I like it in all three colorways. It's really modern looking. I like the, I mean, all the tools are there. All the tools we use every day are there. And then this is the main print from the line with a, a sewing machine. Let me flip that so that they're not upside down. So super cool, I like that the print is large. And let me show you the other colorways of the fabrics also. Uh, I guess we'll move to this one next. So I really love, especially from this fabric line, the small scale prints, because they're not just, I don't know, they're all special. Like these have the buttons, the heart, the scissors. Um, this one's really cool. Let me open it up a little bit more so you can see the hands holding um, the needle, the heart. Um, I like this one a lot. And again, there's the damask print, one in an orange background and then one in the pink background. And then these cute little safety pins on this one. And then here's another sewing machine print. All right, so one more colorway, one more stack of fabric. I think the blue colorway is probably my favorite. These just look really, really great together. Oh, nope. I think I put that one too far off the screen. Sorry about that. Can you zoom out? Uh, no, that's fine. And then I think this is my number one favorite print with colorway. I really like the, it's got a really light gray background. I like the dark blue with the um, lighter blue for the, the shading. And then again, another sewing machine print. So lots of, lots of new fabrics added to my stash. Um, I'm curious out of the, let me move some things out of the way. Out of the three colorways that I showed, which one's your favorite out of the three? So I guess I'll just show you the main prints. Um, did you like the blue the best? Maybe you liked purple. I admit there's not enough good purple fabrics out there, so this one's really excellent. Or maybe you liked the green one the best. So let me know which one was your favorite. I have a feeling it's going to be spread out evenly, but maybe you'll surprise me. Maybe maybe the green is going to be everyone's favorite, so we'll see. Let me know in the comments which, which your oh, favorite one was. So Danny says the blue's winning um, by, by far, by a lot. Okay, awesome. Um, a couple things that I wanted to let you know about. Um, my friend Gudrun is hosting a free quilt along starting today, every Sunday morning. She'll be going live on her Facebook page. Um, her company is called GE Designs, and thanks to Tamara for letting me know about the free quilt along. I've linked to that in the description in case you need some extra things to keep you busy. That free quilt along might be one of them. Again, that's linked to in the description. Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, we'd like to invite all the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. We really appreciate your support. We saw so many people talking before the show, um, supporting each other, and I feel like, especially now, that's what we need, uh, support and um, positive thoughts um, being shared and going out there into the world. So speaking of positive thoughts, Karen emailed me recently 
And with her permission, I'm going to share her email. I thought it was super cool and I just wanted to share it with all of you. So this is Karen's email. She said, um, hello, I hope you are well. I wanted to let you know that I got a job this week. I know that sounds strange, but hear me out. The first bag I ever made was the Oslo craft bag. That bag made me fall in love and she writes capital L-O-V-E with bag making. I became a bona fide bag lady that day. I almost always make your patterns. I love them. They are always so well thought out and easy to understand. I started posting all the bags I make on social media and was contacted by a woman about teaching at the Spartanburg Community College. I said, heck yeah. I went to the interview with six So Sweetness bags and blew her away. She was amazed that I had made them. She said they were amazing and offered me the job pending my background check um, came back clear. I just wrote the curriculum for the two classes I'm teaching. The first is a beginner class. We will be making a mix of bags and garments, but the Oreo bag and the um, dumpling pouch are on the list. The second class is an intermediate bag only class. I will be teaching the satellite bag and possibly another. Then the students get to choose a project for the second half of the semester. I will be directing them to online pattern makers such as yourself. I want to thank you so much for helping me discover my passion for sewing. I always look forward to seeing you and Danny on social Sundays. Anyway, anyways, just thanks. Um, thank you, Karen, for your letter. It was amazing to read that. I was so excited and I hope your classes, I know your classes are gonna be amazing. And um, how fun to share your love of sewing with others. So um, again, congratulations to you. Um, I had a question, another question for you. Have you ever taken either a sewing or a quilting class before? Let me know. So I've certainly taught my share of sewing classes, bag making classes. Um, I'm trying to think, Danny, do you remember me taking a sewing or quilting class before? I certainly, I, I, I certainly want, yeah, I certainly, I've certainly gone to lectures, but I don't think I've actually taken a class so it's something that I've wanted to do for some time I'm hoping later on in the year I can do things like that because it's it's just fun sewing together as a community or as a group and um, yeah sewing and quilting classes are certainly um, really really fun stuff so let me get over to the book review for this week the book is called embroidered kitchen garden I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you what it looks like Obviously, these are all embroidery projects, and I really liked it because they're, for the most part, all vegetables, herbs. There's some flowers in there, as you can see on the cover, um, the bee over there. The first half of the book is showing all of the projects, how they were, how they were stitched. So I'm going to flip through most of these pages, and then the second half of the book is explaining the different stitches and all of um, the the outlined artwork so that you can just either trace or copy the pages and then transfer to your to your fabric of choice. So a lot of good stuff here. I think these would re be really cute for um, some, maybe some fancy napkins or a table runner or a tablecloth. My grandmother has um, a tablecloth on her kitchen that her sister embroidered for her. The whole thing, it's a circle tablecloth. The whole thing is embroidered and it looks amazing. So. Um, something along the lines of something like this embroidered into a tablecloth would look really, really great. All right, I'm going to flip through a few more of these pages. Perhaps some of these are things that you grow in your own garden. I actually this week picked up some seeds for some of the vegetables that our bearded dragon eats, so Violet and I were going to try planting them. Hopefully we're successful. My cousin is a farmer, he lives in Michigan, so he was sort of advising me on a few things that I could do to get uh, the seeds growing. He suggested I grow them as microgreens and then just feed them to, 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 to flash uh, soon after they've started growing. So we're gonna try that and see how it goes. Uh, I think that's about it. There's a few more. And then as you can see, there's a few birds. Oh, there's a lizard over there, speaking of lizards. Um, this portion, as you can see, is an explanation of the stitches and the artwork is following on the pages. And again, you don't have to enlarge it unless you'd like it to be bigger or smaller. Um, they're full size pieces. So again, the book is called Embroidered Kitchen Garden. And I've linked to this book on Amazon in case you're interested in checking it out. All right. So a few days ago, if you're a member of our Facebook group, a few days ago, I posted in the group that, um, 
we were trying to step it up this week to come back with not only book club, but come out with a free pattern and video, a new pattern, a new project. And um, I worked really hard to get it done on time. I, I didn't tell anyone what day that we'd be coming out with the new pattern and video, but we really wanted to have it done before the show tonight. So I actually, <laughs> I finished the pattern yesterday. I got it to my pattern testers and I said, you know, I don't expect anyone to make this, certainly because, uh, you know, we're filming the video tomorrow. So we filmed the video, we spent most of the day filming the video. Um, so we really, we really hustled to get this together for you. So I want to share with you, this is my original, the first one that I made. Um, it's called the Tower Crossbody Bag. So it's a small, as you can see, it's a small crossbody bag features some optional tab detailing. I made this version all in one fabric. It's got a recessed zipper in there. And then I made the second version for the video with, uh, I chose a contrasting um, top panel for the bag. Um, oh, here's the, here's the front of the bag. Um, it's got a zipper on the front. There's a zipper in the lining. And again, the recessed zipper. And um, it's got darts to make it three dimensional. And I, I just wanted to come out with a project that people could work on, take their mind off things. It's a fairly quick sew. I think we spent almost three hours filming the video, so that would be, um, again, working quickly, but um, that would be a, a gauge for someone how long it would take. Um, that's not counting cutting time. It's a great beginner-friendly project. Maybe if you have some kids home with you, something to work on together. And um, Danny put together a little slideshow of the amazing testers that finished the bag in less than 24 hours. So thank you to Paula, Brooke, Michelle, Diane, and Helena. <laughs> amazing work. And like I said, I didn't even expect anyone to be able to make it in time because it was such short notice. But uh, yeah, thank you. And it was really fun filming the video. Um, it's always nice to, to film an easier project. And um, I hope you have fun with it. Um, I've linked to the pattern and video in the description. Um, I also, um, my original plan for this pattern was for it to be a free pattern because I wanted everyone to be able to access it. Um, my, if you watch the show often, you probably have heard me talk about the stable where I ride. Um, I've been riding there almost two years continuously. I rode there as a child. Um, I have to say Violet's Violet's very first lesson riding a horse. She rode a horse named Tweety. Tweety is a pony that I rode when I rode there as a kid and they actually also have another pony there. She's retired now but her name's Tara. She still lives there and I also rode her when I was a child so this place means a, a, a whole lot to me. I lease a horse that lives there. His name is Smudge. I haven't been able to see Smudge lately um, because we've been sticking to the house but um, the horses are taken care of um, the best care, the best food, the best care. Um, if there's a problem, the vet or the farrier comes out right away to make sure everything's okay. And so um, the public has not been allowed to go to the stable. So I know things are a lot different than they used to be. Kids and adults used to go for lessons every day. Um, that's not happening now. The horses still need to be exercised and cared for and so um, if you decide to do so there's two options in the product listing for the pattern again of course there's the free option but if you decide to do so um, there's a two dollar option or a nine dollar option and basically I'm what I'm doing with that money is I'm collecting hundred percent of those earnings and donating it to um, the owner of the stable and my trainer just uh, to help things, to help a little bit with things, I guess, to do my small part. Um, it's really important. I, for me personally, I feel like it's really important to help support um, our local businesses. I know things are really difficult right now. And so this is um, what I thought in my head when I was really upset last week about everything. Um, this is, uh, I don't know, just, I wished I could help. Um, I can't help everyone, but I can help a couple people. And so this is what I decided to do. So again, the link to the free pattern and video is in the description. Pattern's all set, video's all ready. Danny did an amazing job today editing the video. Not only, we, didn't, we not only filmed the video, but he edited it in the same day. So um, thank you, Danny, for doing that. And uh, thanks for listening. So 
Um, let's get over to some live questions. If you have a question for me, um, either a sewing related question, question about a notion or a tool, bag making related question, type your question right now in the comments, uh, wherever you're watching this, this show, either on Facebook or YouTube. I'm going to get to as many questions as I can live. Before we get over to that, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, and that winner is Pija Rubai. So congratulations to you. Contacted you on social media, and um, we'll get you set up with your prize as soon as possible. So, all right, uh, Danny, take it away with the questions. Hey Sarah, just a quick question. Any lining fabric you could recommend? I always struggle to find the right fabric for a lining. So if you're shopping online or at the fabric store and your, your quilt shop has um, fabric lines, um, fabric lines are made up of different sizes of prints. So that tulip pink fabric that I showed you before is a combination of small, medium, and large prints. So you could um, choose fabrics from the same fabric line if that's easiest for you. So for example, you could choose perhaps a large scale print like this, maybe a small scale print to go with it. Um, the small scale prints are always great for lining fabrics. However, if you're like me and you just purchase all of your favorite large scale prints, um, uh, either solids or fabrics that read as solids are great choices for linings, or that's my personal opinion, but um, what I mean by near solids, fabrics like, um, this fabric is designed by Juicy Juice. As you can see, it's a solid background, but it's got a little bit of uh, speckle detail to it. Um, this is from his fabric line called Spectrotas Spectrostatic, and it came in all different colors. As you can see um, from behind me on the shelf, that was all from the same fabric line. So in a, actually, I, I don't wanna even say in a pinch, like, um, I guess that's my go-to lately. Like I'll choose uh, just a fabric that kind of coordinates with my exterior fabric. Maybe one of these fabrics has um, a pop of lime in it, and so I'll choose that for the lining. So that's, for me, that's the easiest way um, how I choose coordinating linings. I'm, wa you know, as I'm waving my hand around answering the question, um, I actually burnt myself, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. I burnt myself, so all we had were black band-aids. When we were filming the video for the free pattern, I was like, oh gosh, like I hate to, um, my finger was blistering and it started to look really ugly and I didn't want people to be uh, squeamish or grossed out when they were watching my video. So I covered it with a band-aid. I'm not bleeding or anything, but it just looks really gross. And um, I don't know, I just have this, we only had black band-aids and every time I look at my hand I'm like oh my gosh and it kind of feels a little tender still I I burnt my hand taking something out of the oven yesterday and um, got some aloe from my aloe plant on it as soon as possible but uh, wasn't quick enough to stave off the blistering but um, yeah anyway that's the story behind the black band-aid um, Lori great question how would we donate so um, and Pamela also says, um, how can we donate in addition to the pattern? Oh, that's so sweet. Um, the, the link that I put in the description of the video is to the product listing for the, the tower crossbody bag. That's the new pattern and video. So there's in the drop down box, there's three options. So, um, there's the free option. There's also a $2 option or a $9 option with a little asterisk, um, and below explaining what the donations for, um, so the two, to two or nine dollar options, everything that we bring in, 100% um, will be donated to the stable and to my trainer. And um, I uh, yeah, I don't know what else I was gonna say about that, but um, anyone who's able to, I really appreciate you. And also I wanted to say there's so many people out there working, um, you know, the front lines, uh, certainly nurses, doctors, healthcare workers, um, people that are cleaning at the hospitals, uh, grocery store workers, um, people that are delivering our packages still. So I really, really appreciate all those people that are working so that we can uh, stay home and be safe. Uh, Jeanette says, do you have a preferred seam ripper? So my seam ripper, which I asked Danny, I use it a bunch today. <laughs> um, the seam fix seam ripper, it has a cap. There's the seam ripper right there. Um, the end of the seam ripper is kind of, has like a rubbery tip and so does the, the, the cap of the seam ripper. 
This tip is really great for after you've ripped your seam, um, you have all those uh, loose threads all over the place. The rubbery tip kind of helps as you kind of roll it over your fabric to help pull the threads out of the fabric. Um, your standard school eraser will also do the same um, do the same thing, but yeah, that's the seam ripper that I use. Um, there's no link for the free pattern. Um, maybe someone could verify. It's called the Tower Crossbody Bag. It should be the link in the description. It should be the end of the list of links of all the different products. Danny's double checking for me right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's the the sixth one down in the list. Um, right above, did you know you can view my bag? Yes. Yep. Um, if you can't find it there, however, um, it is also on the SoSweetness.com website. Uh, we have a tab for what's new. It's the, the first one on the top of the list of what's new. Lindsay says, I work with DecoBond for the first time and had trouble getting the entire piece to stick. Is there a trick to getting the DecoBond to stick when using a heat press or an iron? So um, that one I found needs a little bit of extra time on the iron and certain interfacings um, especially fusible fleece and fusible thermal am. I have better luck. Um, normally when I'm ironing, especially shape flex, I iron with the fabric face down and then follow that up with the interfacing so the interfacing is closest to the iron. I feel like I have better luck with Decker Bond and fusible fleece and those other similar interfacings fusing with the right side of the fabric face up, so meaning the interfacing underneath it. Um, because the Decker Bond is a little bit thicker than the Shape Flex, I feel like the reason I have a better time is, an easier time, is there's less um, thickness or less substrate for the heat of the iron to go through until it hits the adhesive, if that makes sense. And so that's why I like to iron with the, the right side of the fabric face up. If, yep. Uh, Meyer says, when did you start the book club? So we did book club last year in 2019. It was a six month book club, so um, we did actually, due to personal circumstances, we ended up doing, I think we did five books instead of six, is that right? Yeah. We did five books actually last year. The original plan was to do six, but um, with each project that we did in 2019, um, sorry, each book that we did in 2019, we had a project to go along with it. So um, some of the free projects that uh, people are still making, like the um, Suffolk uh, coin purse um, or the Clyde Bank tote, those were all book club projects and the names for all of those projects were projects from the books that we read each month. So people have been asking um, throughout the end of last year for book club to come back and when everything that's been happening lately started happening, I realized we really need to come back with book club. So. Um, we're gonna do a few titles this year, not every single month, but um, we'll see how everything goes with um, scheduling and um, choosing appropriate books because I, I've read a few books in the past week trying to find the, the right title and we always wanna make sure that there's enough sewing or quilting related content in the book and so that's um, kind of the method. I had, to, I had to say no to a couple titles this week because there just wasn't enough sewing um, content in the book, but um, The Quilter's Apprentice, definitely um, lots of sewing in that book. Uh, people are saying the says coming soon, they have to let them know they had to refresh the page, and also they have to choose an option before they can choose okay. the let them know. Danny is letting me know that um, several people had questions in the comments that uh, the Tower Messenger bag said coming soon. Um, Danny's suggesting if you refresh your screen or open it up in a new browser and also there's a drop down box so you'll just need to select your option. Um, there's three options. Again, there's the, the completely free option, the $2 donation option, and the $9 donation option. Thank you, Danny. Barbara says, with a new pattern work with a faux leather cork, um, yes, certainly I used for both of my versions, I used I only just used a little bit of cork for the, the tabs. Um, I haven't seen yet just because only a few have been made, um, but I could certainly see the body of the bag made in cork or vinyl if you'd like. There's an optional, let me hold the one up that I did to coordinating fabric. So there's an optional, well not optional, it's, it is in the pattern instructions, but this band at the top of the bag. I added that in there so that if you wanted to use um, contrasting fabrics like I did in this particular version, you could use two different fabrics. If you wanted to make the whole bag and say cork or leather, um, you could just skip that top panel and just use the, the, the full pattern piece if you're using cork or leather or vinyl. 
Janet says, are you still sending out product if we put in an order? Yes, um, we actually gave, uh, we have a full-time employee, my cousin Adam, who helps us with, um, he fulfills all the orders, cuts cork, puts together kits. Um, last week we gave him a paid week off. This week we're also giving him a paid week off. We're just trying to do our part to social distance. So last week Danny and I started taking care of all the orders. So Danny either does them in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping or he mm -hmm. Or he helps me with them in the morning. Um, most of the time he's been doing them in the middle of the night to give me a break, uh, I'd like to think. And so um, one of us will be taking care of the orders. No one else, uh, we've been isolated for 11 days now, so no one else has been coming in our house since then. So um, we're still taking precautions with washing our hands, wearing gloves when necessary. We are still sending out orders every day. I had an email from someone who was worried that I was uh, going out to the post office. We actually have um, for years now, our mailman actually picks up the packages, so we just leave them out for the mailman. He comes and grabs them, and so no one's making contact, you know, we're not making contact with anyone else in order to get your orders out. We are still sending them out every day, and um, is that all I have to say about that, Danny? I think so. Someone else mentioned to bring up the mask that you mentioned. Oh, okay. Um, they wanted to follow up. Michelle says, Sarah, do you know what filter material can be used in the masks? So... Um, there's a lot of different free pattern and video videos that have been circulating lately for masks. Um, one thing I have to note about masks that are made with fabric, they are um, not meant to be protecting, necessarily protecting people from the virus. Um, it's meant for, there's other reasons why people are wearing those cloth masks. For example, I have two veterinarian friends I posted in the Facebook group this week. Um, I was putting the word out there to collect cloth masks for my friends that are veterinarians because they were hoping to divert actual surgical masks that they normally use um, to doctors at hospitals. So they would use the cloth masks for their animal patients and then divert the surgical masks to hospitals instead. I have a nurse friend that I spoke to on Facebook today she said um, for now her particular hospital where she works is okay on masks but she asked me if I'd make her some cloth masks so that when she's commuting to and from work she can have the cloth masks and so um, when nothing else is available the cloth masks are doing the trick and um, you may have been hearing that a lot of hospitals are running out of the actual surgical masks and so in a pinch the cloth masks are uh, better than nothing Terry says, is there a non-woven interfacing that is not fusible? I'm making face masks, masks and apparently the best shield is non-woven. So from what I've seen, the patterns that have been circulating online, they are suggesting using um, a tightly woven fabric, um, woven fabric like quilting cotton would be okay. Um, They're usually recommending several layers. I've seen some patterns with filters. Um, I have seen online um, fabric shops, online fabric shops that are selling filter fabric, but the, the ones that I saw were, um, at least for now, if they were in shelter in place states, um, people aren't, shelter in place means people are not able to go to work at um, businesses that are deemed as non-essential. So essential would be restaurant, you know, grocery stores, gas stations, doctor's offices, things like that. So um, the one website I did find this morning, um, for now, they're not allowed to stay open. They were trying to get um, clearance to stay open because they are selling filter fabric. So I didn't want to put the link out there just in case um, for now it seems like they're not shipping, but certainly if anyone has any additional information, feel free to email me and I can compile everything together just so uh, we have uh, concise information to pass around. Uh, Louise says, what can I substitute for Decoville in the Amethyst Project Bag? I don't have any available at this time. So that's a great question. So in the Amethyst Project Bag, it uses foam interfacing and shape flex and then um, an ultra firm interfacing to give um, stiffness to the lid and bottom as well as the sort of the hinge in the back of the bag. So that's, um, I don't know, I feel like that stiffness is kind of important because it gives the bag structure, especially when you're putting a lot of things in there like sketchbooks, um, pencils, pen, you know, all your tools that you're using. Um, a few options for a stiffener. Um, Pell and Peltex makes several different uh, model numbers of projects, uh, products. Um, 70, which is a sew in Peltex, 71, which is fusible. In a pinch, you could use the double sided fusible. Um, Decoville Heavy, which you mentioned, you, you, you already mentioned you don't have. 
Um, if you have any Decker Bond, which is pollen number 809, you could use a few layers of that. Um, I haven't used anything past two layers, but maybe, th I don't know, maybe three or four layers combined, fused first. Um, well, not fused first, because you wouldn't be able to get it in there. Uh, perhaps several layers of that would be okay to come up with the same amount of stiffness. Other than that, I can't think of anything else that I would use uh, besides those three types of uh, interfacings. Barb says, can most of your bag patterns be made on a regular sewing machine? Yes, definitely. I have a Juki home sewing machine currently, but my first sewing machine um, as an adult was a, a very inexpensive brother sewing machine. I think I bought it for around $120 new and I could sew all of the bags on there um, that I could sew now. Um, the airplane bag, which is a quite large bag, I remember sewing those on my old brother's sewing machine. So yes, you can sew all of these bags on your home sewing machine. I would um, maybe consider doing some sort of little test to see how many layers your machine can tolerate if you've never um, tested that out before. And you can do that with scraps of fabric and interfacing. Deidre says, do you carry bag hardware? Yes, we do carry bag hardware. We carry it in five different finishes. So we have rainbow finish, uh, silver, uh, gunmetal, rose gold, and like a light gold finish. And if you go to the So Sweetness website, there is a sub tab in the shop for hardware. Jan says, what do you use for most handles? So. I would say I kind of tend to rotate between a couple different substrates. Uh, quilting cotton is always great for handles. Um, I probably have more bag handles made with quilting cotton than with anything else. Um, cork leather or vinyl is also a really nice look on a bag for handles. So I guess it just depends on your personal preference, what you like. You can also make a double-sided strap with um, cork or leather on one side and quilting cotton on the other or even like um, a ribbon on one side. And I do have a free video on my YouTube channel showing how to make a strap out of um, a double-sided strap, like I just mentioned. Alex says, is that gorgeous new black and rainbow on the website? Also, are you selling that new Tula line? So we do have the black and rainbow cork on the website now. Um, unfortunately, I did not order the new Tula pink fabric line. Um, I knew we would be in the middle of a move and I just didn't know, I was not, not entirely sure what would be happening when. And um, in previous Tula Pink fabric lines, I ordered a lot of fabric, and so that's why we decided, decided to skip this line. But I linked to, in the description, I linked to the Tula Pink homemade fabrics on Fat Quarter Shop because um, they carry everything that I showed on the show tonight, the fabrics, um, the notions, and the threads. Delva says, I was wondering if the tabs on the Oreo bag can be sewn before the flat pieces are sewn together. Um, I think I need to think about that for a minute, but feel free to email me after the show and we can discuss that privately. Um, yeah, some of these, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Ronnie says, hi Sarah, where do you buy your spools of Aurifil? Um, We do have a few limited colors on our website in the Notion section. However, my favorite fabric, or not my favorite fabric, my favorite online shop for purchasing thread, um, and they carry just about any brand of thread that you can think of, is Red Rock Threads and that's redrockthreads.com. They have every color of Aurifil. They have all the different weights, and um, it's a great place to shop if you know the specific color that you're looking for. Diane says, do you use a fabric spray to protect your bags when they're made, or do you use something else? So Scotchgard is an option that you can use for spraying the finished bags. I should mention, just because it came up in, a, in an email question this week, um, regarding the cork fabric. The cork fabric is actually pre-treated by the manufacturer with UV protectant and also Scotchgard. So if you're making a bag in entirely all cork, um, I feel like the additional Scotchgard is not necessary, but you can certainly use Scotchgard if you're using quilting cotton or other materials in your bag. And you always wanna test a little bit of the Scotchgard on a scrap of fabric before you spray it on the finished bag. Myrta says, does Danny sleep? Uh, I sleep in every morning. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, I don't know if you heard him, but he says he sleeps in. So he likes to, he's a night owl, and I like to get up early. So we're kind of, we see each other for certain hours of the day, but um, yeah, passing each other by for a, another portion of the day. Yeah, he definitely stays up late. I think the other day, 
I came down and I asked him, I was like, what time did you go to bed? Because the lights were on down here and he'd done orders. He, he stayed up all night doing orders and I think he said 7 or 7.30. So, um, yeah, that's just, that's just how Danny rolls. <laughs> Are you calling in on the questions, Danny? Okay. I apologize if I did not get to your question live, uh, but we'll be back next Sunday. Danny will be joining me on the show next Sunday. I have one more thing to get to tonight, and that is the giveaway. So um, I decided to give another, I've been giving away $40 gift certificates lately. I thought tonight would be a good chance to give an, away another $40 gift certificate. All you have to do to enter the giveaway, it's one randomly drawn winner. I choose the winner at the end of the day on Saturday, and, and I announce the winner on next Sunday's show. All you have to do is answer this question in the comments wherever you're watching the show now, either Facebook or YouTube. And you do need to be logged into your either Facebook or YouTube account in order to leave a comment. My question is, what is one thing you are grateful for today? So let me know the answer uh, to this question. And um, everyone stay safe. safe. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.